Hi everybody! In this video we are going to learn to draw in AutoCAD with accuracy, because it's something very important to use from the beginning. When we don't use the accuracy tools properly, problems are more likely to happen in our projects. Lines might not intersect at the correct points, or figures that look closed but actually have small gaps which can cause errors when you try to use commands like for example hatch. So, we will cover the following topics. How to use the polar tracking and ortho mode to draw accurate horizontal, vertical or line sets to specific angles. How to use the object snap to snap points in objects and their different modes. And finally, we will learn how to draw with the grid and snap technique. So, we can start the tutorial. To draw a horizontal line, I need to activate the command line first. I click anywhere on the workspace for the start point, then I drag the cursor to the right. You can notice this dashed green line with the label saying polar and 0 degrees. If I click right now, the line becomes completely horizontal. And this happens because I have the polar tracking turned on, which is this icon located in the status bar. The polar tracking allows the cursor to snap to certain angles. And by default, these angles are set to 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees, making the lines vertical and horizontal. But if these are not enough, there are options to snap to small angles. Just choose the one that suits you better. Now, look at what happens if the polar tracking is off. Let's click on the icon. It's disabled now. Then I'm going to draw the line again. Type L and press Enter. Click to place the start point. Then, as I'm trying to draw a horizontal line, I realize that the dashed green line is not there. And even the line looks horizontal, there will always be a slight deviation. So, I strongly suggest you to use the polar tracking whenever you are making precise drawings. Orso mode. There is a method to easily place orthogonal lines by clicking on the icon Orso mode, restrict cursor orthogonally. Then, when I'm drawing a line, I can only make it horizontal or vertical. This can be useful if I'm working on a part of a project where I just need those type of lines, like in the example I'm showing here. Object Snap is one of the basic features in AutoCAD and we should understand it well to achieve a high accuracy in our drawings. Basically, when using a drawing tool such as Line, I can snap on strategic points of objects, such as midpoints, endpoints, a center of a circle and many others. These points are called Object Snap modes and we can decide which ones we want to activate in this drop-down list. And remember that it's important to enable just the ones that are necessary. Now, we have a line here, and we want to draw a second line that continues from its right extremity. When I use any drawing command and move closer to this end, this endpoint indicator appears, allowing me to start a new line exactly from that point. However, if the object snap is turned off, these snap points will not show and the next objects that we draw in the project will end up being inaccurate. Take a look at the next example. Let's draw it. I can use either the line or polyline command. I choose polyline. I'm going to type its alias PL. Draw the first line. Type 20, then the vertical one. Now, as there is no line to continue here, I'm going to press escape. 
then the third line has to be connected to this intersection. I'm going to turn on the command line. I move the cursor near the left of this line and look at this green square appearing here, saying endpoint. The same happens when I go to the other side. Look, you can see it again. If I click right now, the next line will start automatically from that point. This means the three lines are now connected to each other. Type 25 and press Enter. Those green squares only appear because the object snap is active. By clicking the arrow next to it, I can see the modes that are currently active. You can see here Endpoint, which indicates the extremity of a line segment. Now. I'm going to introduce you the midpoint. First, I'm going to click on it because it's not active. Now, I want to start drawing from the midpoint of this line. I activate the line command, and as you can see, this triangle indicates the midpoint. I click now, and the next line starts exactly from there. The mode center allows us to snap centers of circles and ellipses. To use it properly, we have to start the drawing command, for example line, and then, if you can't see anything here in the middle, just hover the circle border until the center point shows up in the screen. Finally, I can draw a line here. I'm going to draw a concentric circle here, using the object snap mode center which is useful for these situations. We can also find the center of a polygon, but this time it requires to switch on a different option, the geometric center. Similarly with the circle, it appears when hovering, this time, this square. Object Snap Tracking. This is a very useful function and I'm going to explain it with an example because it's easier to understand. But first, make sure you have the icon Auto Snap switched on in the status bar. With Auto Snap, also called Object Snap Tracking, a tracking line shows up in the screen to help me in the drawing process. If I turn it off, you can see that in this midpoint the tracking lines no longer appear. In this drawing, we want to draw this line, which is located at a distance of 30 from the right. I'll turn on the command line. Place the cursor on this endpoint. Then, drag left slowly, so that I can see this label that says extension. At this moment, if I type 30, the new line starts at that distance from the endpoint. It's simple, and with this, we can avoid drawing extra lines. Then I just need to draw the remaining objects. To connect this line with the rectangle below, drag it down until you see this cross here. This mode is called intersection and it's usually active by default. Now click on it and press escape. Another example is when I'm drawing this rectangle. I can draw an extension line up from this point until I intersect the tracking line that is appearing now. So click and now you can finish this rectangle. Now look what happens when I deactivate the auto snap. You can see that the tracking lines from the midpoints or endpoints etc. no longer appear. Among the remaining modes available, there is Perpendicular, which we can use it in two ways. Here, in this line that I'm creating, I can find the perpendicular intersection with other line, which in this case, it's this point. Or, I can draw a perpendicular line, starting in another line's endpoint or midpoint, and you will see the perpendicular tracking line appearing. The quadrant, as you can notice in its symbol, 
snaps to any of the four points of the circle at 0, 90, 180 and 270 degrees. It's quite useful indeed. The nearest mode can be useful in specific situations, like in this example where I want to start a new line at any point along this diagonal line when I don't need any accurate distance. But please note, activate the nearest mode only when you are going to need it. Otherwise, switch it off, because it may interfere with other snap modes, especially the extension tracking, which, in this example, it should be appearing right now in the screen. Now, a final thought. Avoid switching all the snap modes, and just activate only the ones you are going to use. With that, you will avoid those unnecessary snap points from appearing. So, I'm going to cover the grid and snap mode, which is an alternative drafting technique to draw with accuracy. Now, keep in mind that to use this technique, it's not enough with just switching the grid on. You can see, if I want to draw a line, I am not snapping between any points right now, so I have to turn on the snap mode as well, if I want to make this to work. So, if you pay attention, you can see that right now the snap spacing is 10 mm between the closest points and I have a major line every 5 squares, so 50 mm between two major lines. This means that I can easily tell larger distances. For example, in this situation, I know this new line is at 200 mm from the rectangle at the left because there are 4 squares between them and 4 times 50 is 200. So, for some drawings, I think the grid is actually a great method to use, and you will understand that in this exercise. So, we are going to start making the borderline of this figure, and make sure both grid and snap modes are switched on. About the object snap, I'm going to turn it off because it's not necessary for this method, but it's not a problem if you prefer to use it. Turn on the command polyline. I'm going to place the first point at an intersection of major lines because it will help me later to understand better the distances. A good thing here is that the values shown on the label are accurate, so I can click when I see 300 here. Then I go to the left and I can still type the length if I think it's more practical in a specific situation. This one is 150. Then I'm going to click in that point. And in this part below, I'm going to follow a major square and then connect with the origin. Yes, it was really simple and quick. Now, for the rectangles inside, you will see it will be much easier. Because if I was doing this exercise using extension lines and object snaps, I would probably need to make support lines or typing distances manually. However, with the grid and snap method, it's really quick if I draw rectangles following the major lines due to the fact I know that the edges measure exactly 50 mm each, making the process faster, of course. Then the square above is even easier, because I only need to draw around the major lines. Finally, there is one rectangle below. And here, this spacing is 15 so I need to count three squares from these lines. So, if you are interested in learning AutoCAD from the beginning, I have a complete course in AutoCAD as well as another one in Revit, in the platform Udemy. If you join it, you will have free access forever. There aren't distraction ads, you can find DWG files and PDFs in some lectures, and I also included full exercises at the end of the course, to practice your skills. So you can find the links below in the description and check out the list of contents and the preview lectures. So it's everything, see you in the next time.